the zero point neither goes clockwise or anti-clockwise. You all have heard about the equator line and we are set today to go see this an imaginary line and to show it to you guys. In Kenya, the equator passes through the following towns, Nanyuki, Timboroa, Maseno, and to a small village north of Nakuru town known as Mogotio. Here we are at the equator and ready to start a lesson on Coriolis effect. Stay tuned. To help us understand more about the equator is an experiment of what happens when you are at the north of equator, south of equator and at the middle of the equator. Our instructor is ready with the equipment which you can almost mistake for a magician's apparatus but this is what is needed for this equator experiment. With me I've got simple apparatus. It's a bowel with a hole at the center, a jug with water and a light stick. So as you understand, equator cars have it to two, the north and the southern hemisphere. Now from this position, this is east, this is west. At the right hand is the northern part of the hemisphere. Then at the left is the southern part of the hemisphere. So as you have seen the initial there, N is north, south is S is south. So we have to move some few meters to the north. You see what will happen and I will explain more about it. You come with me to the north. We are now at the northern part of the hemisphere. Now, I love to explain so that you get the concept. The hole at the center allows centrifugal force, which means it allows the movement or the rotation to take place. I'll pour the water to the brim. I'll pour the light stick at the center. you notice the movement which is clockwise. It was getting very windy, so I would love to explain what she said. Beans planted north of the equator will coil up in a clockwise manner. Another example she gave was that of flushing the toilet. Toilets north of the equator when flushed, the water will rotate in a clockwise manner. Same to the cyclone winds. They will blow up in a clockwise manner when it occurs at the north of the equator. Interesting also was that persons born in the north of equator have their hair growing in a clockwise manner. I actually checked with my hair and I can confirm. <laughs> you can also try my hand to allow the movement, which is the centrifugal force. Then I put the stick at the center. It's like a wall clock. So this is going clockwise. So the experiment is called Coriolis effect. Sorry? The experiment is called Coriolis effect. So if you have the GPS, which is the machine to measure the equator, there's no need of this. One with it to measure the equator is zero degrees, the altitude and the feet itself. But these are simple apparatus. did an experiment on the northern side of the equator so it's time to go to the south of equator so that we see how the grass is going to turn whether it's going to be clockwise or anti-clockwise we are now at the southern part of the hemisphere now at the north was clockwise at the south is counterclockwise now the examples which I had given at the northern part is vice versa or opposite to the southern part of the hemisphere I hope you still remember the coiling plants, the flushing of the toilet or the sink, the cyclone swing, the devil's dust swing, and the hair. It goes in a counterclockwise manner. So, what is your observation made? 
at the north was clockwise and the south anticlockwise. Another observation is the water reduces the rate of movement decreases. To expand on that is that as you go further from the equator, the wind becomes stronger. As you come closer to the equator, it becomes still, which is at the center, there's no movement. So how does the winds affect the equator? So when the sun is overhead at noon at the equator, which is on 21st of March to 21st of September, it's too hot along the equator. Also the winds also affect because along the equator, there is warm winds from the north which comes towards the equator and we experience equatorial rains along the equator. So at the equator there is vegetation because of that warmth. So guys, this is the southern part of the equator and you see the grass is going like anti-clockwise, in an anti-clockwise manner. There you have it. We finish at the line at the equator. And now we go at the center of the equator, the zero degrees line. Put it here in the center and see the difference. At the line at the equator, there is no movement, which is at the zero point. So, as I have told you earlier, the experiment is called Coriolis effect. So, when you are being asked why is it not moving at the line at the equator, it's due to Coriolis parameter at zero degrees. So, as I have told you earlier, so if you have the machine, which is the GPS. There's no need of this. You come with it to measure the equator at zero degrees, the altitude and the feet itself. But these are simple apparatus. So that's the end of the experiment about the equator. Thank you. You are doing it so well. Your explanation is just so well. Like somebody would want to listen to you over and over again. Thank you. <laughs> because Thank it's you. so... How do I say? It's it's so much in order, like from one point to the other, and you don't miss your points. Okay. She says she learned about this concept back in 2002 when a resident of a neighboring village called Kisanana, who is a professor in South Africa, visited the equator and decided to train the women and girls who are selling their curios on the Coriolis force or effect. In physics, Coriolis effect is defined as an effect whereby a mass moving in a rotating system experiences a force, also known as the Coriolis force, acting perpendicular to the direction of motion and to the axis of rotation. On Earth, for instance, the effect tends to deflect moving objects to the left in the southern and is important in the formation of cyclonic weather systems. We are different women here. Different, we are from the same community, but some also are not yet learned. You know, yeah. class four, class six, and few of them are from four leaders, and they are they are housewives from Oleo, and they are daughters. So we are not just again making people know where we are from. Come on, we are getting wingy, get stuff. When you are not from Kumbu, we are wildlife. I talk at the Balala Kumbu. That's nice. I think the county government should employ you. <laughs> <laughs> Even the CS for tourism told, told the people who, who are here. Yeah. Kifunguli wapa. Mwakishi wu mamu. Exactly. Yes. That is what they should actually do. I think people are correct. Yeah. I know. No, Kenya, the way it is. I know. Then I keep on doing the past. Yeah. Yes. But how I wish they could always be looking at knowledge, how knowledgeable one is, or how experienced one is, rather than bringing in someone who has no knowledge about tourism, who has no knowledge about the equator, the equator and then he or she is employed there just because they have a
I think this is a disease that we need to fight in this country. That people should be given opportunities based on how well they know they know that uh, that area. In the years to come. Yes, we hope so. We hope so. Because what you are doing is really nice. Thumbs up. I'm grateful. I have learned something. Thank you, thank you. Yeah. So I'm happy to be with you. Bring more clients and then tell them that it's an experiment that we're making. Yeah, so listen, guys, if you are on your way from uh, Nakuru heading to Marigat or Bogoria or Lake Baringo, please make an effort of st stopping here at the equator and ask for. Anne Keter, she's the best teacher, she's, she really knows how to explain it. So let's all support these women, let's work together and let's build this country. Thank you. You're welcome again. Thank you so much, it was a pleasure.